Uh, welcome everyone. So this is our 37th live stream geometry. Uh, we have two other people here with us currently. Um, so sorry I missed last week, but I think you're going to enjoy today um, doing problems from the uh, Balkan Math Olympiad and the Balkan Math Olympiad shortlist. Um, so the competition for 2021 um, just happened not long ago, and then they released all the problems, um, the candidate problems also. Um, so I'm going to be doing two of those. So two of the candidate problems from uh, 2020, which um, is the previous year, and then a, a couple other years. Uh, so I hope you all enjoy it. I see we just have the third person um, come on. And with that, uh, hello, I, Michael. I Feng, I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, thanks for asking. Yeah. Yes. And so now I am going to share my screen and uh, start um, the session. So hold on just a second. All right, here we go. Uh, and we have a fourth person joining. All right. So here's the first problem I found. Th this one looks kind of easy, um, but I wanted to do uh, at least two problems from this year. So uh, we have a triangle ABC. Um, so it's an isosceles triangle. Whoops. Let me just do it like this. So um, we have a circle. I see someone wrote something in the chat. Oh, this is actually on the exam. Okay, I didn't even realize that. So it's not just um, a shortlisted problem. All right. So yeah, if you've already seen the solution, um, yeah, don't don't spoil it for us. Uh, so D is the midpoint of AC. All right, and. Uh, gamma is the circumcircle of ABD. All right. Oops, sorry. All right, so we have the circumcircle of ABD. Um, the tangent at A, so I'm going to draw that. It crosses the line BC at E. So let me uh, extend BC. And that will be point E. O is the circumcenter of AB. So let me draw that. So that's uh, circle E. So O is the center of E, oops, center of E. And we wanna show the midpoint of AO uh, lies on um, gamma, so this, so this circle. So, so basically, um, let me hide a couple things just to make it look nicer. Yeah, this doesn't look like a super hard question, um, but, yeah, I just wanted to include some stuff um, from the latest shortlist. All right. So we could also just say let AO meet gamma at a point, and then we could show that that point is the midpoint of AO. Let me move it around a little bit. Hmm. Let me try. There, maybe that looks a little better. Uh, not sure. Uh, they're, they're too close. <laughs> what if I draw like a, a flatter there? That looks a little better, I think. So D is the midpoint of AC. Okay, so really we want to show, I mean, we just want to show OC. Well, C is not necessarily the midpoint of the E. So, but, but uh, 
B is the midpoint of AC. We want to show F is the midpoint of AO. So we want to show DF is parallel to OC. Right. Um, just trying to draw the best the best picture. I don't want to make it look like C is OC. I don't want to make it look like C is the midpoint, of, but maybe it is. Is C the midpoint of B? It's starting to look like it. Yeah, I think C is the midpoint of B. Let me draw like a taller triangle and see if that's still true. Yeah, C looks like C has got to be the midpoint of B. Um, let's see why that's true. So, Oh, are the labels for D and F swapped? I think they are. Yeah, D is the midpoint of AC and F is the midpoint. We want to show F is the midpoint of AO. All right, so um, let's see. Is it obvious that C is the midpoint of B? Let's see, is that just an angle chase or something? Uh, now I'm starting to wonder if it's actually true. So if you draw the tangent line to this circle, So angle AFD is, a, we want to show it's the same as angle AOC. Let me, let me double check this. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely the midpoint, right? I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. So how do we show that? We use power of a point. Um, let's see, we wanna show that BC is equal to CE. We know that AB is equal to AC. Sometimes it, it might help. What if I reflected B about A? Let me do that. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna reflect B about A. So point B prime. And then I wanna show, so I wanna show that BC equals CE, but I know that BA is equal to AB prime. So I want to show that B prime E is parallel to AC. And that might sort of just be an angle chase. Let me see. Yeah, I wonder if that is an angle chase. Find similar triangles. So angle, angle uh, shows C as the midpoint of B. Okay. 
So yeah, we want to take advantage of this tangent C, right? So angle B A E. Um, or angle angle D A E. Angle D A E is A B B. Um, Oh, oh, okay, we, we have like two midpoints, right? So D is the midpoint. I don't think EAB is isosceles. All right, Sir Dar is now joining us. Okay, similar triangles, let's do this. Is ABD similar to something? So is ABB similar to ACE? Let's check that out. Uh, I don't think so. For ABF maybe? So we want to show angle ABB is equal to angle AEB. So, so basically, is that obvious? Because let's see, D is a midpoint. So BD is a median. Um, oh, and this is also a midpoint right here. So really, I mean, A is the midpoint of B, B prime, G is the midpoint of B prime E. Um, oh, but we don't know G is the midpoint of B prime E. We kind of want to show that. So could we show B prime A, E is similar to, we could try to show B, B, C is similar to A, E, B. Um, yeah, there's a couple of different similarities we could show. And one of them should work. Let me show that is equal to that. That shouldn't be hard. That should be easy to show. So angle uh, BAE. Um, is 180 minus angle, okay. So yeah, BAE is equal to BBC. So that's one of the angles. And then um, we show another angle is, BAE is BDC, and we show angle ABC. Oh, and ABC is DCB. So yeah, those triangles are similar. All right. And once we know that, I think it should be pretty easy. Because, so then BDC has to be and since, since CD is half of AC, BC has to be half of CE. And um, okay, so I can show C as the midpoint of BE. So OC is perpendicular to BE. And then it's probably just an angle chase to show. Yeah, okay, I, I think we got it. I, I don't even think I need B prime really. Um, so let me, let me delete B prime and then I'll start writing that. All right, so I'll say let AO meet gamma at point F.
And then first we're gonna try to show triangle BDC is similar to AEB. So we have um, angle BAE is 180 minus BDA. Which is uh, what is that? Which is angle BDC? And then we have angle ABE. Um, so I'll just write it all out. Angle ABE is ABC is BCB. And so then that means that triangle ABE is similar to triangle BCB. And um, then we have BC is half of AC is half of AB. And, and so that means that um, BC is half of BE. Um, which means that OC is, is perpendicular to BE. And then we also show FD. So, so we have uh, angle ADF or, yeah, what's the easiest way to do that? So angle AFD, uh, it's 180 minus angle ABD, um, which is, but ABD is, is C8. Um, actually, let me think about that. Yeah, we, we have to be pretty close here, right? Um, So, so, so let me try to calculate angle AFD and uh, show that it's equal to angle AOC. Uh, that's one way to do it, right? So angle AFD, this might not be the fastest way. Uh, it's 180 minus ABD. And that's 180 minus uh, ABE minus DBC. Um, and angle AOC. So, so, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try to calculate both and then try to end up at the same thing. So angle AOC is angle, AOB plus angle BOC. And uh, BOC we know is BAE. Uh, so can we show that these two are actually the same thing? So if we added them, uh, so, 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 so DBC is the same as AEB. Right. See that? Yeah, it overlaps the diagram. So okay. 
Uh, it shouldn't be that hard. And, and AOB here is, is, is half of AEB. I'm sorry, it's twice angle AEB. So I'll just write that here. And then is it obvious that these two are really the same thing? Um, yes. Um, because all three angles add up to 180. So So we have um, angle AEB plus angle BAE plus angle uh, AB, BAE, ABE. And then that means that angle AFD equals angle AOC, which means that um, FD is parallel to OC. And um, so since, since uh, AD equals DC, AD equals DC implies AF equals FO implies the midpoint of AO lies on gamma. All right. So that is the first one. I don't know if I found the most efficient way of doing it, but um, I'm sure if you probably look a little bit longer, uh, you would, there might be some ways to simplify it. So we'll move on to the next problem. It's a fun one. All right. So here's one with a 45 degree angle. So I don't usually do problems that have 45 degree angles, but I wanted to do one, I wanted to do at least two from the short list in 2020. Let's see. So if I rotate, so the ones after this will be from previous years, um, counterclockwise. So this will be point C. All right. And I will label a 45 degree angle. So the circumcircle is center O. Oops, my bad. Uh, so O is the center of C. Close that. And M is the midpoint of BC. And B is the perpendicular from C to AB. And fortunately, I won't have to rename that. And then we draw a circle with center uh, C and radius CD. So obviously, it's tangent to AB. And it intersects AC at the point F. So F. Um, and it intersects the circle C at the points Z and E. So E is on AC and Z is on uh, part BC. And we wanna show that Z, E, C, O, and F, M are concurrent. It's kind of interesting. So yeah, really the whole figure is a pretty fixed diagram other than just scaling it because we know exactly 
what this triangle is. It has a 45 degree angle and it's isosceles. All right, so we know that this is tangent. Um, ZE, so yeah, the, I think the trick, so we know triangle ADC is a, is a isosceles right triangle. So maybe we could use that somehow. Um, So AO and M are linear. Oops. I'm just going to draw that. Let me just check the problem. Z, E, C, O, and F, M. Maybe we could, what if I drew the intersection of Z, E, and C, O? Because those look perpendicular. Um, in fact, they are, they, they are perpendicular um, because ZE is the radical axis and O and C are the two centers. So what if, so we know G is the midpoint of ZE and is G also the midpoint of FM? Yeah, so All right, we got a bunch of people joining here. So yeah, G is the midpoint of ZE because ZE is uh, the common chord and O and C are the centers. Uh, we just have to show, um, can we see that um, G is the midpoint of FM? So that, that means, yeah, how, how should we show that? Maybe we could use congruent triangles. Um, let's check the chat. You could show FEMZ as a parallelogram. Ah, good point. Yeah, that would be a good way to go. Forget about OC. Yeah, we don't even really need OC. Yeah. ASI, thanks for joining. Um, so let's see. Yeah, where do we use that 45 degree angle? We gotta use it somewhere. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, so we really don't even need point O, um, like a con said. Uh, can we use cyclic quads? So we want to show angle FEZ is EZM. Um, FEZ. So. FEZ is half of FCZ. Let me draw that. FEZ, it's half of FCZ, uh, which is 180 minus ABZ. What is EZM? Um? 
Let's see. Chat. The ZDFE and isosceles trapezoid. Um, that would mean ZM is equal to ZB. I think so. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like ZDFE is an isosceles trapezoid. Is that an angle chase? Might be. Because angle FCE is equal to angle ACE. Um, we want to show that's the same as angle BCZ. So we want to show AZE. I wonder if AZE is isosceles. No. Is AZ perpendicular to CD? Uh, o, okay, OCD is ACO. OCD uh, is ADO. Wait, how do we know that OCD is, is ADO? I'm guessing that's an easy angle chase. Oh, OCD is, is, is DAO, okay. So, so DF is parallel to ZE. Oh, oh wait, so, so CO is the perpendicular bisector of DF and wait, I don't see. So why is DF parallel to ZE? So D is the foot from C. I see why C is um, also MDF is 90. Oh, because G is the mid, okay. So, so yeah, we have a lot of information here. So OC is the perpendicular bisector of both EZ and DF, so yeah. And then MDF is 90, um, which is what Ruben says. And so it looks like we're really, really close because, yeah, I mean, we have, so yeah, ZD is EF and is ZD also ZM? Uh, or, or how would we prove that? Let's see. So MDF is 90. So, so MD is parallel to OC, that's what that means. 
Um, is 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 DBZM cyclic? No. But yeah, we, we have to be really close here. So MDF is 90. So MD is parallel to OC. Um, can we show ZE is the perpendicular bisector of DM? So yeah, we know it's perpendicular to DM. Um, yeah, how do we show it's, it also, uh, Yeah, so it's like we want to show M and D are reflections across ZE. We should be pretty close here. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, let me see, is M the circumcenter? What if I, uh, no. So I want to use that MB is MC is MD. And those are also, okay, so BDOC is actually cyclic. That might be where we use that 45 degree angle. Yeah, I like that. So BDOC is cyclic. And M is the circumcenter. So can we show MZ is equal to MG? Because that would, um, oh, but that wouldn't prove it, I don't think. That is true, MZ is equal to MG.
Is MZB congruent to MGO? I think it is. And I think that might just be an angled phase. Uh, there's so much stuff going on here. But yeah, if we can show MZB is congruent to MGO, then that would show. Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure if that would get us quite where we want. A lot going on here. Yeah, how do we find MZ? Let's see. Use power of a point somehow. Yeah, we want to show ZE is the bisector of angle VZM. We use, I don't know, this thing and maybe projective geometry, but that I just made it harder. Let's see, so Ruben was saying MDF is 90 degrees. I don't think we've ever used that so far. Can we use the radical axis theorem? ZE, is FM some kind of a radical axis?
Okay, I think the problem is solved actually if we show z e by sex angle b z m. So, so angle D Z M is the same as angle Z. Oh no, sorry, I got my circles wrong. Inversion about the circle at C with radius CD. We could. I feel like there has to be a. Um, yeah, it's possible. So Z, D, F, and E would be would stay the same. Um, G would go to this point. Yeah, where would it take M though? Oh wait, I wonder. If we, is DH perpendicular to BC? Okay. So yeah, I think DH is perpendicular to BC. Okay, so I would go to that point. I'm just thinking it through in my head before I do it. That's interesting. Okay, so I'm just thinking about Oh, really? All right, so because you can show it as the same power with respect to the two circles. Yeah, it's probably just like similar triangles, right? Or I feel like it would be. Okay, so let's let's suppose that's true. Then. CD squared. Yeah, it feels like we should be done. I guess we would we would want to show that angle ZHD is equal to angle ZHM. Um, so is ZHB isosceles? I think that might be true just by an angle chase. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like that has to solve it. So if we can show ZHB is isosceles, HD is equal to HM by an angle chase. All right, I'm going to start writing this up, but I, I think we have a good strategy here. So yeah, once, once ZD is equal to ZM, ZD is equal to FE, like we said. So, so ZM is equal to FE, and also uh, uh, EG is equal to GZ. And, and also, that's enough to show that FEMZ is, is, a, is a parallelogram. 
and then that solves the problem. So yeah, I, I think we're good. Um, so, okay, so I'll, I'll start writing this up. Uh, did I add any points that weren't, oh, okay, point G. I'm gonna hide point G for now and I'm gonna <clears throat> add it back in later. So let H be the foot of the perpendicular from B to BC. <clears throat> And then I'm going to do um, what Hakan mentioned. So let me open up the chat. All right. So uh, CD squared minus CH squared is DH squared. Uh, which is BH times HC. So H has the same power with respect to um, both circles. I'll just write that with respect to uh, the circle ABC. And um, and the circle, let's say centered at C. The circle centered at C and passing through B, all right? Let me hold on one sec. I'll check the chat in just a second. So, so, and that means that H lies on Z. I like that. So I'm going to draw Z E and then let, I don't even know if I need point G. Maybe I'll add that in later. Um, oh yeah, yeah, BDC is defined to be 90. Um, and, and then, so, so we were saying that DFEZ is an isosceles trapezoid. I'm trying to remember um, because OC, um, we know OC is perpendicular to ZE. This is the radical axis. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that as like the first step. Um, and now, so an angle chase showed that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the angle chase that, I forgot who, who told me it. Um, uh, Arunab, Arunab, sorry if I mispronounced it. So OCD, Uh, all right. Thanks for making my life easy by uh, typing it up already. Uh, 
OCD is uh, DAO. Why, why is that true? OCD is DAO. Oh, oh, because ADC is is um, as an isosceles right triangle. So, so, um, yeah, so we have a lot of information here. So we show that DH is equal to HM. So DH squared is BH times HC. Z, we know that ZHE is perpendicular to CO, uh, which is parallel to DM. I agree with that. No, but, but why does that mean ZE bisects? But, but, but how do we know that H is on the perpendicular bisector of DM? Uh, so angle chase. Um, so I guess we show angle DHE is 45. We show, um, okay, so, yeah. HDM is, uh, Ninety minus PDH minus MDC. Okay, so so that's actually where we use that. Um, M is the circumcenter of. Okay, so right. All right. Let's try this. There we go. So, so first, I'm going to say. Uh, um, so, I'm going to write that step where BDOC is cyclic. So. Do we even need that? Or we, we just need that M is this, eh, yeah, I'll, I'll write it out. So we, we don't need that O lies on it. Oh yeah, okay. So, so, so we really don't need that circle. So, Uh, so MDC is MCD. Let me do a double backslash here. Put on a new line. Um, and so that means um, I mean, we knew that DM was perpendicular uh, to OC. That's that's pretty easy. Um, how did, so yeah, I know we said that. But it was obvious to me before, but I'm trying to remember. Um,
so, so, so let me just, just finish running it to the end and then I'll see if I can add in that step. So MD is, but why is MD parallel to CO? Angle, probably just angle chase, right? Yeah. Um, so angle, angle M, angle, um, DMB is equal to angle OCB, and that's that's pretty easy to, to show. So because DMB um, is half of because DMB is similar to ABC. So So, so, so DMB is BAC. And that means that DM is parallel to OC. All right, we're almost done with this, just a little bit more. Okay. So, so that means HD is HM. So uh, ZE. Okay, so, so then this means that ZM equals ZD equals FB. And, and then also, um, and also angle MZE is angle DZE. So we have um, angle MZE is angle DZE uh, is angle FEZ. And that means that FEMZ is a parallelogram. So yeah, I'm sure there's probably a, a bunch of different ways to finish this off. Um, because since ZM is FE and MZE is FEZ, yeah, FEMZ is a parallelogram. So, um, so I'll just say the, the midpoint of FM lies on both ZE and OC. And so that means Z, E, C, O, and F, M are concurrent. All right, time to move on to the next one, but thanks everyone. So yeah, this is the first time in a while I've done a problem that has like a specific angle like this. Maybe I'll do some more of them uh, in the future. All right, so here's the next problem. Uh, so we have uh, triangle ABC and we draw the three altitudes. Uh, A, D, B, E, and C, F.
Oops, sorry. A, D, B, E, C, F. I'm gonna hide those. Excuse me. I'm gonna hide those as the very last thing. Uh, e prime and F prime are the reflections of E and F over A, D. It's kind of interesting. So we have an isosceles trapezoid there. Um, and yeah, actually they all lie on a circle through H where H is the orthocenter. But let, let me just draw that before I forget it. So yeah, these points are all cyclic. Um, this, this looks like Pascal's maybe. I, I bet Pascal's might just crush it. So, so B, B, F prime and C, E prime meet at X. Um, yeah, I want to draw the whole ray, I guess. I wonder if they intersect on the circle by Pascal's. Looks like it. Yeah. Okay, maybe Pascal trivializes this. Um, so they intersect at X. We have to prove X lies on the circle. Um, and BE prime and CF prime intersect at Y, which probably also by Pascal's lies on the circle. And we want to show that AX, YH, and BC are concurrent, which is probably true by, this is probably a Pascal bash, right? Let me just make it look nicer for now. I had a couple lines that are longer than they need to be. And then redraw them. Um, So is it is it clear by Pascal that X lies on the circle? I'm really bad at applying Pascal, but uh, let's see. So if, if we let C E prime meet the circle at X, or, or meet the circle at x prime. Um, yeah, let me let me hide this one for now. So basically, okay, yeah. Uh, what is what is f? Okay, f prime. There we go. So angle AEH is equal to angle AE prime H is equal to angle AFH is equal to angle AF prime H is equal to 90. And that means that A, let me see what order they're in. Just AEFH F prime E. A E prime F. Look. Um. So yeah, let, let me hide Y for now because I don't want to make it. Oops. 
Okay, so let C E prime say call the circle omega. Uh, let C E prime meet omega at X prime. And we want to use Pascal on the circle Hakan mention or, or the, the hexagon Hakan mention. E prime, X prime, F prime, EAF. Um, X prime equals X lies on the circle omega. Let me just think about that for a sec. So, so basically that would mean X prime F uh, So, so we want to show X prime, F prime, AF and HE are concurrent. Uh, let's think about that. Okay, because E prime E and F prime F meet at the point at infinity. And then, yeah, I would have to write this down. We first have to show V, F prime, and E are collinear before Pascal. Okay. Um, true. And that should just be an angle chase, right? Because uh, by Blanchett's theorem. Um, so we have angle F prime EA, angle FDA, which uh, is equal to um, angle EDA. We'll just say by Blanchett's theorem. It's also a really easy angle chase. All right. So D, F prime and E are collinear and And then B, uh, F, and B prime are collinear. So yeah, we have to move Pascal's after that. What, what just happened? Oh, I did it, ah, uh, sorry. There we go, it's right here. Go. Oops. So we got that and that. So And then similarly, Y lies in omega. Okay. 
And to finish, uh, okay, so that would show that B, C, and E prime H intersect F prime A. And A, X intersect H, Y. Um, yeah, is there a way to do it with just one Pascal? Let me see. Let me first, uh, let me first understand the first Pascal we did. So, If we use Pascal's on this, um, Let me, let me write out exactly how to do Pascal's theorem for this, because I'm still a little confused. So um, we have, uh, so we have X F prime intersect A F, and then is that would be uh, B or, okay. Oh, do you see how to do it without Pascal's? Hello. Hello. That's Daniel, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, after proving that Y and X lie on the circle, uh, mm -hmm. it is easy that to see that X is the HM point. You want really? To that X is the HM point. So AX, HY, and mid, on the midpoint of BC. Interesting. So. I mean, the, the, the intersection point is the midpoint of BC. So X is actually the HM point. So how. Um, Oh, because because angle HXA is is ninety, and then how do you know um, how do you know that AG is a is a median, or or how do you know it passes through the midpoint? I think it, it might be an an angle chase. Uh, let me write it. Okay. Uh, Let's see. That's a really interesting observation. Uh, so G is the circumcenter of BFBC. So B H X C is cyclic. Interesting. Okay. So from that, we know that X H passes through the midpoint of B C, and then similarly, or A X passes through, and similarly, um, Y H passes through the midpoint. 
but okay so it's it's like a similar argument why is the the q point so so byac is cyclic basically um Wow, this is interesting. Okay. So, all right. So, I'm going to write that out. So, yeah, it's some more interesting information. Uh, so, let G be the midpoint of uh, BC. Um, and then I'm going to write out a cons angle chase. So that means um, BHXC is cyclic. And then um, uh, HX is perpendicular to AX. Um, that means that AX passes through G by the HM theorem. That's video number five on my channel. This, that, that one I have memorized. Um, and then similarly, so Ruben just did the angle chase for me. So thanks for that. So, so Y is the Q point. So yeah, I've used this fact on my channel before that those three points, um, Okay. So that means that BE prime AC is cyclic or BY AC is cyclic. So, so Y, H, and G are collinear. I've, I've used this fact on my channel before, so I'm just gonna write it. I'm just gonna say it and then move on to the next question. So G. Oh, what just happened there? Okay, so so AX, YH, and BC concur at G. Let me um, see if I can make just a teeny bit of room here for that last statement. So we have All right, 
So I'll move on to the next problem. So yeah, there's a lot of concurrency problems in these problems here. Oops. Okay, I'll just draw them concurrently. Very cool. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, so this one I think was actually on the Balkan map. 